Greetings in Jesus' name. The title of this message is very important in that God has warned us in his word to beware of demonic deception. We are getting a plethora of near-death experiences on the internet, heaven and hell encounters, and some things need to be said about these things. I've been called to publish testimonies for nearly 40 years now, primarily salvation testimonies. And so I listen to a lot of testimonies because it's the call that God has placed on my life to give them primarily more exposure, give Christians exposure to what God has done in their lives to the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is to give people an opportunity who aren't sure what they believe about God, spiritual matters, wondering what truth is, to hear how Jesus Christ has impacted the lives of people for the better. So I read, I have a lot of time, I read, I listen now more than read because so many, so many experiences that people are sharing are going on to video. And more and more, let's, let's back up here, um, probably 10 years ago, it was difficult to get a uh, testimony of somebody who's gone to heaven, one that was believable, somebody who's experienced a dimension of hell of some sort. Uh, they were there, but they were pretty rare 10, 15 years ago. Um, <clears throat> but now we're being flooded with uh, video clips of people supposedly experiencing um, dimensions of hell, dimensions of heaven, um, and uh, having near-death experiences of various sorts. People need to be aware that Satan can um, deceive people through Heaven and hell encounters as well as near-death encounters. Well, how do you know that, Norm? How can you prove that? Well, first and foremost, if you're not born again, if you don't have some maturity in walking in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not read his Bible, if you've not read the Word, if you've not studied the Word, if you have not listened to what other mature men and women of God have to say about God's Word, you're, you're more susceptible to believing lies, believing the deception that Satan um, is propagating through these supposed encounters uh, where he's getting in there and telling people lies and they're passing that along as though it's valid. Uh, here's a for instance, I heard uh, somebody wrote, a, a military vet recently wrote out his uh, near-death encounter um, on the battlefield, uh, and I'm not going to give specifics. It was read by a professional narrator, and they have a, a channel that uh, plays only near-death encounters, and uh, some of them are fascinating, but this individual soldier wrote about how he got shot in ambush and went into some glorious uh, heavenly places and uh, ends up saying that while he was in this heavenly dimension explaining in glorious detail of what he remembers it being like uh, he he says well I got a glimpse of my many past lives while I was there. 
other than that, it was a great encounter. I think he spoke well of Jesus Christ, and uh, if I remember correctly. But there are no past lives. Okay, reincarnation is a lie from the devil. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, and then judgment comes. Well, what's going on with all these near-death experiences? Isn't that death? Many of them clinically died, and then they come back. And so is the Bible lying? Can it not be trusted? I mean, that's two deaths. You know, you come back and tell your story. Well, that's one death, right? And if you were clinically dead, proven by the doctors, and then someday you're going to die permanently. So that's two deaths. Now, I, the Holy Spirit's talking about when it's your time to go and there's no coming back, that's your time that God is talking about. It's appointed once to die and then judgment. Uh, Jesus Christ himself, the Bible says, is going to determine our destiny based on what we did in this life. Okay. Now, I mentioned that particular near-death encounter because it's getting slicker and slicker. Satan is getting slicker and slicker. And let's just read a little bit about what God has to say here in Matthew chapter 24. Uh, he's got some disciples. And uh, so the disciples say, uh, well, let's start out here with chapter 24, verse 1. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, uh, do you not see these things? Assuredly, I say to you, not one of these stones shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay. Now, as he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and then the end of the age? First of all, they were assuming that temple was going to stand until the end of time. Uh, it didn't happen that way. Those That temple was torn down um, some years after Jesus was resurrected, and it's not been rebuilt as of yet. Now, verse 4, And Jesus answered and said to them, Look, Notice the priority here. Many things are going to be said about signs of the end times that the Holy Spirit wanted us to read about as Jesus spoke. But notice a priority here. And Jesus answered and said to them, these disciples, asking him the questions, Take heed that no one deceives you. Take heed that no one deceives you. People need to be very careful when they hear about near-death encounters, when they hear about heaven and hell encounters, they need to be very careful in what they believe about what people are saying. Satan is slick. And God has given him latitude uh, with these encounters that people are having. Many of these drug, many of these encounters of heaven and hell are based on drug overdoses. And we know, doctors know, that w the mind is capable with drugs to experience all kinds of phenomenon that seems real to the people having them, but are they trustworthy? That's the question. We need to be very careful in believing that what people are sharing is trustworthy. There is a hell, and God is allowing people to experience different dimensions of hell to shake them up, wake them up, letting them know you keep going the way you're going, and you're going to end up here, and you don't want to. Some of those people get to experience dimensions of hell, for the explicit purpose of coming back and telling them to whoever will listen 
and uh, giving people a warning. There is a hell, and it is for eternity, and you don't want to end up there. There is a heaven, and that's where you want to go, and you want to end up there. And it is through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the Word of God, that gets you to heaven forever. And if you're not familiar with the Word of God, you're vulnerable to believing Satan's lies. There are many who feel a time is coming. As you read Revelation, the book of Revelation, primarily, where when the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to come upon the scene, they're going to come upon the, this planet, and they are going to have a huge following. They will have great worldwide influence. Okay, The Bible tells us, God tells us, that this false prophet, whether it's a multitude of people or one individual with a huge following, we can surmise, they're going to be able, or this individual false prophet is going to be able to do miraculous signs and wonders. It says, make fire come down out of heaven. And many Christians are already discerning that this UFO phenomenon is truly a demonic phenomenon. That's what it is. Nothing short of demonic. Deception, yes. But they will come as though they are friendly beings trying to help humanity. And um, there will be some demonstration of prow power to, uh, to try to persuade the gullible, those who can be deceived that they are representatives from God himself sent down to save humanity from various forms of self-destruction. That is coming up on the scene. Most likely. We are a little early in that progression, but look for that to happen. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But uh, many people in the New Age for years have been uh, <clears throat> communicating with spirit beings who are saying, God is going to allow us to come to earth and uh, help humanity keep from self-destructing, okay? To bring forth blessing, to bring bring forth various things that God wants to give to them, and all it is is demonic manifestations, demonic spirits masquerading as angels of light. And if people don't have the Holy Spirit, it takes the Holy Spirit to discern evil, and you get the Holy Spirit by making Jesus Christ your Savior and Lord and being serious with him. Holy Spirit can reveal to us where evil is present and what evil is doing. Very easily, he knows. But if we're not in, in, in communication with the Holy Spirit, and that comes through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father, then we're more vulnerable to Satan's counterfeit, deceptive devices. So I won't say any more than that. I just wanted to put it out there and let people, when you listen to a near-death experience of somebody going to heaven, having an encounter with Jesus Christ, having an encounter with angels, supposed angels, near-death experiences, um, dreams, visions, th things of this nature, supernatural events happening in the lives of people. Don't believe it as though it's true. Don't believe it necessarily as though it's accurate. Bounce it off of God. Go to God in the name of Jesus Christ and ask him to quicken to you whether it is a trustworthy uh, encounter experience or whether it is not. Okay? That's what I feel God wanted me to share here and warn people against. And rejoice when there's bona fide ones because there's many bona fide ones. God is doing some awesome things supernaturally. He can continue to do that. Uh, but Satan is also doing counterfeits, supernatural um, signs and wonders, if you will. He's always been able to do that. 
Uh, the cross never took that away from him. What Jesus accomplished on the cross never took away Satan's ability to deceive through supernatural experiences that people can have. Okay? That's going to continue until Jesus comes back and locks Satan up and the false prophet up in, in prison in hell for a thousand years. Okay? So, well, thanks for hearing me out and uh, God bless you.